Hello, this is Thermic Light. For over a year now, I've become increasingly interested in feminism and the MRM, which I guess for a guy who avidly enjoys science of all kinds, it might seem like an odd combination of interests. I chiefly started to develop an interest in either movement because I had noticed a great deal of contradictions that proclaimed feminist advocated, namely the inequality and oppression of women in today's Western society. Feminism felt incredibly one-sided to me and gave me the impression that blame was completely upon men for any historical woes of women. But this only left me with one question. What inequality and oppression? With the frivolous and inherent one-sided pros and cons for both men and women aside, I really can't think of any women in my life that I could honestly say were denigrated for being female any more than I was for being male. And in some circumstances I would notice places where women had it easier. An example being the military, where standards are reduced when compared to their male counterparts. The equal pay but rarity of women on military fronts. Plus, thanks to affirmative action, we can expect women to be pushed to the front of any male populated list in employment. But I will discuss these types of topics for a later video. In many ways, I am a stubborn person when it comes to knowledge. As when I discover something that smells of bullshit, I then put a great deal of time and effort at least to spot it so I don't step in it, if nothing else but to improve myself. With my small introduction aside, I'd really like to dig into the title of this video. So is feminist theory considered a science of any kind? It is my opinion that it has very little to do with science, especially when we have noticed all kinds of dirty propaganda like the pay gap and rape culture myth that has come out of feminism. The latter particularly makes me laugh with much derision. To avoid any confusion, I will let a personal hero of mine, Richard Feynman, explain the essential details of theory and the scientific method. Now I'm going to discuss how we would look for a new law. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. Then we compute, well don't laugh, that's the really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compared to experiment or experience. Compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make a difference how smart you are who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. Now, Feynman doesn't quite explain the details of how a hypothesis becomes a theory, but I hope that it does at least help to define it for us. Also, anyone who says that a theory is just a theory, I then invite them to leap from a five-story building while convincing themselves that the Newtonian theory is just a theory. At this point, I would like to ask a question to all you feminists out there. Why should feminist theory be considered a theory? What has feminism done to earn its own right to have its own theory? What part of feminism, be it patriarchy or sexual objectification, coherently explains the behavior of people and society? You see, I find these questions to be a very difficult one to ask myself. When someone asks me why Newtonian theory works, then I can explain it simply and then add more depth into it with mathematical formula. However, when I research feminist theory, I typically get the following vague and ambiguous explanations. I quote, Feminist theory aims to transform women's lived experiences and women's participation in the construction of new possibilities. A woman-centered approach is fundamental to feminist research with the aim of illuminating the life context and experiences of women grounded by their frame of reference, experiences, and language. This thinking develops through a critical awareness of experiences, values, ideologies, and goals. It is through this awareness that consciousness raising and action becomes possible as women learn to view the world through a critical lens and contradictions in their lives become illuminated. Close quote. It seems that feminists are pretty comfortable with the idea of a lens without an aperture because it is only their lens that they prefer you observe life by. How can we expect to take feminists seriously when instead of starting with a truly objective and rational approach, feminists rather adopt their own subjective feelings that define how people should operate? Feminism is an ideology and deserves a theory no more than any other. That includes religions and bigoted groups like the KKK. If you ever wanted to know the biggest difference between MRAs and feminists, then it is this. 
MRAs don't create their own pseudo theory and use it as if it was the spoken word of a god or goddess. Instead, from my observations, MRAs are more interested in helping men and women coexist in a more civil manner, to expose injustices of men, and more importantly for women, to tell you that you're not some dainty little flower who is persuasively controlled by malevolent men, because choosing to be a homemaker who looks after her husband and kids is an honourable person, not someone who deserves disdain for choosing such a life. It is about time that we make feminists a pariah in our society, if nothing else but to develop a more universal support group that only looks at the issues of people, instead of finding new ways to segregate us. Thanks for watching.